Not all. First of all, shout out to Ethan Brown, the founder. I think we're reminded that business is started by people and entrepreneurs, and it shows the power of uh, creativity and entrepreneurship. And a, and a shout out also to Seth Goldman, my longtime friend, who's the executive chair of the company. Again, the, the two of them working together have done a fantastic job bringing this company forward. And, and, uh, and Whole Foods, too, for taking a chance and, and bringing the product in. I mean, Ethan actually started demoing this product a few years ago at a, at a single Whole Foods store and look at where it is today. But I think it demonstrates the appetite for growth and sustainability and growth in the public sector. In terms of this IPO specifically, I mean, obviously, it sets up a narrative around some of the other startups that are also focused on plant-based proteins uh, like Impossible Foods. Right. But how do you think how do you think the broader sector is looking at this especially some of these other bigger food manufacturers that might be looking to get in and compete as well well i think you're right exactly right it's it's on trend with the, the plant-based future and it, i think it shows it's it's being sold as a burger i mean of the roughly 80 million sales 70 percent are in their beyond burger but they've got many other products in the in the product line as well uh there there possibly is an ingredient channel or the restaurant channel the supermarket channel so I think it demonstrates that this has some real legs. Well, Walter, I'm curious about the supply chain for a company like Beyond Meat. Pea protein, which is their a key raw ingredient, is in such right. high demand. Uh, you know, Tyson wants in on this business. We just had Dunkin' Donuts on earlier today talking about uh, their increasing demand for plant-based proteins. How is a smaller company like a Beyond Meat going to be able to secure the, the high-quality plant-based protein that they're going to need? Well, I know Ethan and Seth are working on that, but I think they've, you know, they've got a head, they've got a head start on that in terms of the sourcing. But you recognize that overall, globally, that the uh, the, the food market is moving beyond the single 12 plants that supply 75 percent of the food, and then the peas and the legumes and these other crops are finding more acreage. And I think that the, they'll have to find their way forward. This this demand for the product, the growth of this product, which is uh, I think 180 percent year over year and that's uh, two years running, uh, is going to definitely raise those sorts of questions. But listen, there's a lot of conventional farmers out there who are looking for a, a different path to go. The, the path of farmers the last four years has been difficult. The conventional farming has been a difficult place to be. And uh, there's farmers who are looking for alternative crops to grow, and this would fit perfectly in that profile. Hey, Walter, John mentions Tyson. You know, Tyson had 6% of Beyond Meat when they filed for the IPO in November, then they exited amid right. some uh, tensions right. that that's been reported. I mean, do you expect the big players to try to do this on their own vertically, or are they going to leave it to smaller players to work out, and then they come in later and, and bring it to scale? Well, of course, what we've seen is that a lot of the larger players have, have chosen to buy smaller companies as a way to get into the market faster. I think this just demonstrates, again, uh, from, a, from a food perspective, that that clearly this plant-based trend is real, it's here, there's real serious demand. The demand for this product is not coming from vegans or vegetarians. The demand for this product is coming from people who eat meat, who are saying, I want to eat a little less meat, or I want a choice that lets me kind of impact the environment a little bit less. So this demand is real, it's got real legs, it's going to continue to grow. So I do think the reason I think Tyson exited is because they want a shot at it themselves. I think you're going to see other people say, I, I know that, I know that, for example, Cargill is thinking in a similar fashion uh, in terms of how they, uh, you know, see their future beyond meat. So I think you're going to see both, both in terms of uh, uh, the smaller companies coming up. Uh, you're also going to see larger companies say that they want to take a go at it because uh, the demand for these products is simply too strong at the, at the customer level. I want to shift gears a little bit, Walter. Um, the food delivery war is another topic we really like to talk about a lot here. Yeah. Obviously, Amazon has been expanding mm -hmm. delivery options for food for Whole Foods. But also, a week from now, we're expecting this uh, IPO from Uber. Uber Eats been a strong area of growth for that company, but also a, a big money loser to date. In terms of tackling that last mile of delivery where food is concerned, where do you think we're going? And is there a point at which it becomes profitable? That's a fair question. I mean, what we're seeing again, the proliferation of those choices, as you mentioned, Uber Eats, you mentioned, uh, you know, Grubhub, we've seen DoorDash, we've seen all these companies. Uh, Amazon certainly, of course, has got their, their Prime Now program. So uh, it's clear that the customer wants that choice and wants those deliveries. As far as I can tell, the business model is still a little bit suspect in terms of making money. But if you put it in the picture of the larger uh, sense of serving your customer, 
uh, how they want to be served, uh, it fits into that profile nicely. So I, I think we're, we're, we're past the point of no return. We're not going back in terms of these sort of choices that the customer wants. And um, again, these, uh, these products that we're talking about today, Beyond Meat, they're, they're part of what gets delivered. And uh, we're just looking at a future that's very different than the future that I, you know, that the, the way that when I started in the late 70s, early 80s.